Hello again, Crocoduck Army. So, I put up a video last week asking if anybody had any questions for me, and well, after less than 24 hours, I had about 150 questions, so I had to kill the video and put it on private before I even thought I was going to, because I knew that I was never going to be able to even get close to answering all the questions if I left it up for another 24 hours. So, PureMage91694 put out a video response and asked me about anti-Semitism and asking me whether because he was against Judaism and because of that is does that make him anti-semitic and I said no I don't think so I mean I wouldn't consider myself anti-semitic but I also think that Judaism is just as silly as every other religion basically so I think that where the distinction comes in is when people start talking about things like oh Judaism is taking over the world or for that matter Muslims are taking over the world or whatever it is or this whole bank conspiracy thing that that a lot of people on YouTube talk about and that's the kind of thing that I think goes over into anti-semitism and I don't think that just thinking Judaism is silly which I do too is particularly anti-semitic at all and I do think that the root of anti-semitism is the race not the religion I think it's more to do with with the race whatever it is that uh, people, the racists especially, will throw that out there as being as being part of their little dogma. So another video response I got was from Chandler Christ, and that was, "What scientific hypothesis are you most skeptical about?" Now, if you had asked me this a couple weeks ago, I probably would have said something along the lines of um, genetically modified food being uh, being bad for the environment or something like that. But I think I'm going to go with the whole race and IQ debate that's been going on for the last several weeks. If you can even call that a hypothesis, then yeah, the hypothesis that I'd be most skeptical of is that there are somehow innate differences in races but in terms of IQ. And by IQ, I mean actual ability to analyze or basically ability from birth. I'm not talking about how much you know, I'm talking about actual capacity to think. And that's that's what I am uh, very skeptical about. So, any tips you would give to a new atheist YouTuber? Chandler Christ also asked in the comments. So, I would say that just making videos consistently, don't put tons of time in between your videos. In other words, post at least once a week, if not more, if you can, especially at the beginning. Um, try to post quite a bit. Also, make friends with other YouTubers that have been around a while, and uh, do blog TVs, get your name out there, do some, do some video responses, that kind of thing. All those things will help. And if you have some money to do a little advertising, the Google AdWords thing, you know, you can click for uh, for like a penny or two pennies or whatever to click on a keyword or something like that. You can do that too if you have a little bit extra to spare. It's pretty cheap. So, I got a question from Bleach Fan of the Year, one of my friends in Norway. And he said, uh, I only have one question I'd like to hear you meekly and awkwardly explain in a video. Ever had a gay experience, Eric? I know it can't probably can't top Paul's Ego's video, but still. <laughs> yeah, I saw Paul's Ego's video on that. It was pretty funny. And no, I've never had any sort of gay experience at all. In fact, when it comes to, if everybody knows the Kinsey scale, as far as I know, I'm a Kinsey zero, meaning that I have no particular interest in the same sex. Uh, it's not, not particularly anything that I ever... Um, think about particularly like why it is that I'm that far on that scale and it wouldn't you know wouldn't bother me if I wasn't but I just have no interest in guys sorry <laughs> um, so how do you feel about Scotland trying to secede from the UK M. Kylov asks well I don't think that's very likely at this point and also I, mean, I was in a situation where I was in Canada back in 95 in October 95 when they were about to have their big secession vote and it was just, it was just a big mess. I went to a, a, the hockey game, the Montreal Canadiens, uh, at the time, and um, and Chicago Blackhawks. And when they did the national anthem, everybody was either cheering or booing the national anthem, and no one was singing. And the place was just, it was just like, it was almost like a civil war was about to break out right there in the arena, which was pretty crazy. And hopefully. Uh, hopefully that won't happen to Scotland, that kind of thing. And I don't think that's going to happen anyway, but we'll see. Uh, maybe ask D. Landon Cole about that. He's, he knows more about that sort of thing than I do. 
So, what is your advice on raising an atheist child? Kenny the Angel 1997 asks, well, as a lot of other people have pointed out when it comes to raising kids, I think it's easier probably just to teach them the basics of believing things that have evidence as opposed to believing things that don't have evidence. And I don't have any kids myself, so I don't I can't tell you from experience. But it just makes sense that if you tell them from the beginning that, hey, there are all these myths and all these things that are fun and, and you know, and I'm, believe me, I'm a gamer. I love, I love myths as much, and legends as much as the next person. But when it comes to raising a child, I think all it is is just tell, being able to show them how to parse reality from non-reality. And that's, I think it's pretty much that simple. Um, I'm sure there's more to it, but... So what kind of music do you listen to? Worm03 asks. Uh, I love the rock all the way from the 90s to present. Uh, a lot of the bands that I like, I would say that um, Nirvana would be the band that when I always think of, when people always ask me like what my favorite band is, it's hard for me to give an exact, you know, absolute favorite. Um, Weezer is way up there, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers are up there, Green Day is up there. There's a lot of other bands I like. But Nirvana was kind of the first in the whole grunge scene, and it was it was my freshman year of college when they first became big, and that's when Nevermind came out, and that really affected my overall taste in music. So while Nirvana might not be the band, I, I, I very rarely listen to them anymore. But they were so critical in terms of in terms of influencing what else I liked after that point. So that gives you some idea. Xavier7564, why do you make YouTube videos? Oh yes, my friend Xavier from Brisbane, who I met when I was there. So, um, yeah, why do I make YouTube videos? I make YouTube videos because I want to be involved in the conversation. I was tired of just being a bystander, and I felt like I had something to add. And I remember I, I made a blog once. I had a blog a long time ago, and I've long since stopped writing in it. But it was a blog about politics and all that kind of thing and it was back in I think it was 2005 ish when I started the blog and maybe a little bit before actually and it was right around when the whole Terry Schiavo thing was happening and I remember she was the one that was in a vegetative state and she finally was they finally allowed her her husband to pull the plug or whatever and uh, all the the right wingers were like oh no you have to let her live you know forever in this persistent vegetative state and it just seemed like the world had gone crazy and just conservative social conservatives were just taking over everything i just felt i had to throw my voice in there and so then later when i started watching youtube more frequently and getting more into it i was like you know i feel like i can contribute to this too so i decided to start making videos and here i am so, will you answer my question, Umu45 asks. No, no I won't. Damn, I think I just did. Hmm. Oh well. To Admiral says, what question should I ask you? I don't know. I think you just asked the best question. So, do you know any good drinking games? I bet you do, Mr. Shannonite asks. So yes, I do. I don't think I know any great drinking games that are any different than anyone else plays, but I do remember enjoying quarters. I was pretty good at that one, like, where you take a quarter and you plunk it off a table and it goes into the into the beer glass. It's usually like half full or something and give them a beer or whatever. Um, so yeah, and we also played beer pong in my fraternity in college. Beer pong was a lot of fun. In fact, our our pledged class gift to the fraternity was a beer pong table. So yeah. I like to be your palm. And what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? M4KK393 asks. Hmm, that's an interesting activity for an airplane. I'll leave it there. Uh, let's see. I think I know relative. Oh yeah, uh, Fractal Geo asks. Um, did you? Did I see you in Ithaca this summer, or was it just some random guy who looked like me? Uh, looked like you. Yeah, it was me actually. And I, I think I did ask in the video, but I still I haven't gotten an answer yet. Where did you see me, and who was I with at the time? Uh, I was in Ithaca, yes, because I have relatives in the Ithaca area, and pretty much every year I go up there, and uh, Mrs. Zonstar and I go up there. So, yeah, you probably you almost certainly did see me, and uh, yeah, but the, the first time ever anyone has randomly seen me before, I think, um, uh, not uh, that I haven't specifically tried to meet up with from YouTube that knows me from YouTube. So, 
DTM52 asks, My cats Rocky and Delilah want to know how Mojo and Snowball are doing and what do they do all day. And how do you develop your cat-friendly voice and manners? They always come running, uh, running to the computer. How did you develop your Pied Piper effect on cats? Well, DTM52, I have no idea what it is about your cats that attracts them. I don't know that I have that effect on all cats, but yeah, I think our cats have a pretty good life around here. They have it pretty easy. I think they're sleeping as we speak, as usual. So, let's see. The Gray Daisy asks, Hey, my American friend, got some questions for you. Well, I haven't really thought about anything clever. Just wanted to ask, how often do you ever look back at life thinking what you should have done differently? Maybe taken another education or spent more time with friends. What are your biggest regrets in life? I don't spend too much time thinking about my regrets. I have a pretty good life right now, I would say, comparatively to most people, I think. I mean, I, everybody's got their, their things that they complain about or things that they wish were better, but frankly, I don't have a hell of a lot to complain about at the moment. So um, I would say that uh, in terms of things I could have done differently, um, Sometimes I think, well, maybe I should have played a little less computer games or something like that. But I've always been a gamer, and uh, actually the last several years, I've, I would say I've played a lot less than the previous several years. So yeah, it's all in moderation. I don't, I, don't th I don't have a lot of huge regrets or anything like that, no. So Russian Fanboy says, do you see human humanity surviving for another thousand years? I think that humanity will survive another thousand years and more. Whether it's in the same form or not, I don't know. It could be something something like the Jetsons or something, you know, not like the Jetsons, but you know what I mean. More more technological, more, uh, more the kind of society that would be fun to live in, perhaps. Or it could be to something more post-apocalyptic, if there's a nuclear war or something like that, there would be a lot fewer people. I don't know what, I, I wouldn't even hazard a guess as to what it would look like in a thousand years, but I think it could go either way. We'll see. And what is your favorite band? Um, I think I did just answer that one. I'd say if I had to think of my favorite band right now in like recent history, I'd say Weezer's one of my favorites. Uh, but again, Nirvana was more was was more influential in what I listen to now. But there's a lot of there's a lot of other bands I could name too that I really like. So, do you think Obama will win the next election? Another mastermind asks. I have no idea, and I think the the way that he will get elected is if the economy does better, then he'll be elected. If not, he won't. I think that's a pretty standard answer, but I think it happens to be correct. Obviously, there's tons of other things that could happen between now and you know, 14 months from now in the world that could greatly influence whether he gets reelected or not. And a lot of them have nothing to do with him. They're just things that may or may not happen. So I'm not really sure. Uh, oh, and also Fratis Knox had asked, uh, who do you find the worst and who do you find the best president of the United States? The worst, um, I would I would have to say, uh, I have to go with W just because he was recent, and I, I don't know for sure whether he was seriously the worst president in the United, United, United States history, but certainly in my memory, he had he took us pretty backward, and I, I wish he'd never been elected, obviously, so I didn't vote for him either time. And I would say that the best president of the United States, I'll go with FDR because Back in back in the Depression era, people had the same thoughts that people have now. Like, oh, when is it thing? When are things ever going to get better? And then FDR came around, and he actually did make things a lot better. And of course, he had the whole war thing, and you know, there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff that kind of influenced his presidency that maybe would have influenced anybody that was in during that time. But how he got people back to work and that sort of thing that that's something that you don't see all the time. So, another question from the Great Daisy. A lot of YouTubers such as TJ and Paul Zigo seem to have a very pessimistic view of their country. Even though I don't live in the U.S., I do share a lot of their opinions. You, on the other hand, rarely speak very negatively about your government, healthcare, and so on. Uh, just wondering, what do you think is your country as a, of a whole? As a whole, do you think it's doomed and will only get worse, or do you look at it differently? I don't think this country is doomed. I don't think there's any reason to think that the country is doomed. That does not mean that I do not have some significant misgivings about how government works, the role of money in politics, the role of corporations in politics, and how and uh, essentially things like the the healthcare system being broken the way it is. 
it is there's a lot that's wrong with the country but I don't like to spend a lot of time bitching and complaining. I do sometimes make videos where I'm complaining, but I try to offer some sort of solution if I can. Not always, but I try to offer a solution. Or I'll try to look at the bright side of things too, you know, throw some lightheartedness or whatever into the videos. I don't like to just brood over things and make videos of how everything sucks. It just, I don't know, it's just depressing. And, and there certainly are cases where it's like, well, yeah, I can't even think of anything that's good about a certain topic. But uh, I think that there are always, there are always, there's always an upside to things as well. So I'll uh, talk about that too. What's your favorite book, The Massacre Creature asks? I would say that my favorite, if I had to choose one favorite book, it was probably the never-ending story, not because I think it's like the best that best book that I've ever read, but sort of like the Nirvana stuff I was talking about earlier. It really affected the books and the what I uh, would read later. So it was very influential in my taste in books, and I really enjoyed the sort of fantasy, sci-fi sort of genre uh, from that. Aggies Gegum says, uh, "What do? Why do blacks account for so much of the crime?" Well, I mean, I, to me at least, that's pretty obvious. Uh, although I know you're one of the race realists out there, or whatever you're calling yourselves these days. So I'm sure you probably want to say, "Well, it's just something in their DNA, right?" Uh, no, it's something in their. It's something with not only there's some element of some part. Of culture and there's also a huge element of socioeconomic level aside from that because you know you go to any go to any trailer park in Florida or something like that that's full of white people and you will find plenty of crime there as well so I don't think that I don't think that computes at all um, but I yeah so uh, Les, Lax Scoot X21 says, Are you afraid of someone like Rick Perry who has a chance of winning the next presidential election? Yeah, he is very much, in so many ways, potentially the next W. He's, the exa he's in the exact same mold. On the one hand, I don't think he would beat Obama, all else being equal. Um, but on the other hand, so in a way, I'm kind of rooting for him to win the Republican primary because... I don't think Romney is insane. I don't. I think he's wrong, but not crazy. I think, and I don't think Perry's necessarily, you know, literally insane. But he's just, he is so much like W in in how he thinks and just the the intellectual incuriosity of him, just ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, I am. I'm definitely concerned about Rick Perry, and I definitely don't want him to be president. Put it that way. Full, Furball RZ says, when did you fall in love for the first time and what effect did that experience have on me? Uh, yeah, that, that, the first time I was in love was, I was a senior in college and it ended badly, well, it, it ended like a lot of relationships end, but then after that, it just, it was bad and it just, it, I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, from being in love. I, I didn't I didn't have that much experience with it. So coming into that situation there was so much I had to learn about relationships in general. I didn't ha I hadn't had really any serious relationship until that time. So I I just made pretty much every mistake you can make in the book. Um not every one, but a lot of them. And uh so yeah, it uh, it really did derail me for a while and it uh, sent me into a it set me into a spiral that it took about a year to pull up out of so yeah it wasn't uh, wasn't good <clears throat> um who is my who is your favorite youtuber 420 simpson asks well that is a tricky answer because there are different youtubers i like for different reasons um i would say that Aaron Ra in terms of the science group the group that goes into the like the hard natural sciences he is one of the best, I would say, in terms of pure storytelling, you would have to go with Paul's ego there, and uh, I've only recently, relatively recently found him, and he, he just is really interesting when he talks about, talks about events, and his life is very, just very engaging and um, sort of personable. Um, and then you've got someone like Dark Matter 2525, who is really, really excellent at just his talent, really for doing what he does and just getting what he can get out of animated characters is just I'm in awe of that 
uh, and, and also just a really bright guy in general. And then you have the Amazing Atheist. atheist. Well, so the Amazing Atheist is, I think, if I had to pick, if I had to just pick one, it would be him, but it's, but I wouldn't even put him in, a, he's sort of a different category just because, like, he talks about the kind of things that I talk about and that a lot of you out there like to talk about as well, but he also has that sort of theatrical uh, flair about him and he's very good with that and he's very good at marketing himself and that's something that's pretty important if you're on YouTube and uh, he's just, he's a very interesting person. I don't necessarily think that I'm, even though I agree with him on a lot of things, um, yeah, he's just he, he's just an interesting person. But actually, I know I've got a, another question coming up about him, so I'm gonna I'll hold off until that question. So, what do you think of art and porn? Bob Chaos Twenty Three asks. Ah, uh, yes, art and porn. Actually, you know it's funny because art and porn. I would say that porn that's more like art is more interesting to me than porn where some dumbass in a plumber outfit or, you know, it's one of those stupid things where the it's all contrived and, and there's like the, the housewife that's home or whatever, you know, it's just, it's just nonsense to me. It just doesn't, it makes me laugh more than it, more than it makes me uh, actually want uh, anything else. So, um, if you could choose the next president, who would it be and why? The next president. That is a very good question, and I actually do not have much of a good answer for that. Uh, the next president. I would say the next president should be who I thought Obama was when he was elected in 2008. That's the president that I really want. But seeing as that doesn't really exist, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. The Great Daisy has another question. Uh, let's see. So he says, "Do you play any instruments? If so, what instruments and for how long? If not, do you regret it? And do you miss having that in your life?" <laughs> I played the trumpet for a couple years when I was in elementary school, fourth and fifth grade. I wasn't very good. I stopped playing. I played piano in seventh and eighth grade. I again wasn't very good. I stopped playing. Do I regret it? No, not a bit. I don't regret it. I'm not really particularly musical. I'm not even particularly artistic in general in terms of left brain. It doesn't mean that I don't think I'm creative. I have some creativity, but in terms of the in terms of performance, things like music or or art for actual fine arts, that sort of thing just and even my appreciation of it, it feels like it's not I know that my brain like I'll see art and music and I don't get moved the same way that most people do. When when it comes to movies that's somewhat different. I mean there's certainly movies that really will evoke that sort of thing with me, but but just pure, you know, a painting on a wall or a sculpture or something, it takes a lot to really make me say, "Wow, that's really interesting and that's really engaging." It's I just don't have a lot of that. So Crocodile Army, uh, oh yeah, what is your stance on organic foods? Um, Braden Cowbro asks, I include with this question your position on genetically modified foods. I've been coming into contact with this question quite often and would like to hear your viewpoint on the subject. Crocodile Petty Officer BCB Cowbro signing out, yes. So, thank you very much for your membership in the Crocodile Army. No, so, uh, what I would say is genetically modified foods, as I mentioned earlier, I think that's something that people worry. There is a legitimate worry. There's one legitimate worry that, that I have from genetically modified foods, and that's that certain genes can get um, into other foods potentially and do something. But the, the reason why I say that so generally is because a lot of that sort of theoretical, and yes, there's been you know, cross uh, cross contamination of of genes and that sort of thing, but I, I don't I don't see that as something that's going to crash the food supply or anything like that. I do get upset with companies like Monsanto when I hear about like Monsanto and that, their little patents on their genes, and then they they auto, they get cross pollinated into some other person's field that isn't actually using them, and then they use the seeds for the next year, and it's just it's this big. Um, the problems like that that's that's an issue, and I don't like that happen. So, what are your top five favorite books of all time, C. Esposito asks. Well, I mentioned The NeverEnding Story, that's certainly one of them. 
I also like, there have been some books, um, there are some books about money, actually, that I think are interesting. There's a book by Rick Edelman that I thought was, that I thought was very good and that I, I really would wish, I wish more people would read financial things like that and really understand how money works because it would really help people to not have so little of it. I, there's so many people on YouTube that are, that are just destitute, practically. I mean, and, and they're not, they don't, I know that there's a lot of people that are younger, and obviously, and of course, when I first came out of college, I had nothing, too, and I certainly did not have any kind of a silver spoon in my mouth growing up. Um, you know, a family of four living on one high school teacher's salary, uh, that, that's, you know, it was not that easy. Uh, so, there's a lot, though, that you can learn about money that, uh, that uh, I think the Rick El that Rick Edelman book I mentioned would be good. Um, also, some other books I've really enjoyed. I really enjoyed uh, Greatest Show on Earth by Richard Dawkins. That was a very good book as well. Uh, I can't even name five really. I, I could name a couple others maybe, but they're not they're not ones that uh, uh, I could, I would say they're definitely my favorites. I don't know. What is your educational background? Marechin asks. Uh, I have a BA bachelor's in um, psychology. I got that from SUNY Geneseo State University of New York at Geneseo. It's in upstate New York near Rochester. And also I got my master's, my MS in counseling psychology from SUNY Oswego, State University of New York at Oswego, which is uh, near Syracuse, New York. And I think that's, that's also on my channel page too. So, uh, what is your stance on human augmentation and advancement by, let's see, Quinn JDQ asked that. Well, I think as soon as we started putting glasses on and contact lenses, I mean, we're sort of technically almost cyborgs, and I think that all of that is great. I don't, I don't know why, I don't know why any of that would be bad. Particularly, uh, they're all, they're all just making ourselves better in terms of or whatever. It's subject, subjective, of course, the better part. But I think that I think that all that stuff is interesting and potentially good. So. What is your opinion on solipsism and solipsists? Says Mamushi72Sai5575. Five five five. That's a hell of a long username. Uh, solipsism and solipsists. And number two, what is your opinion on determinism? Well, solipsism is kind of like that. If you've seen that the atheist experience, Matt Dillahunty, the way that he, the way that he dismissively hung up on the guy that was a solipsist and said and said. Leave the line free for someone that gives a damn or something like that and hung up on him. That's kind of how I feel about solipsists too. Even if, even if, okay, so what if we don't really exist and this is really all just an illusion? So, okay, uh, all right, <laughs> I just, it's just a nonsense question to me. But my opinion on determinism, I think that any, any being that is actually out there that is a creator being that is omniscient, would know the results of everything because it, because he she it would have the would absolutely know where each molecule is going where each atom is going and you know people talk about things like the butterfly effect like one butterfly's wings flapping can cause a, a hurricane like a week later or something like that and just all down the line but an omniscient being would be able to see and know what influences would go into the, those sorts of things, and they would know immediately. So I, I don't see that there's any room for an omniscient being not knowing what's going to happen. And in that case, who cares about religion and whatever? You already know the answer. Why would, why would you even care and set up this whole big game based on the Bible or whatever else, whatever holy text you want to throw out there? So... Uh, what else do we have here? Yes, what is, uh, since the religious fundamentalists generally vote Republican, and since many younger atheists seem to be backing Ron Paul as stated that religious pro-life, blah, 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 do you think that if Ron Paul actually won, the, would the atheist Ron Paul supporters significantly dilute the Democratic atheist vote? Mm, and that was asked by ND or third RDR1, whatever that means. So, yeah, Ron Paul, his supporters are really not that many because you can tell by all the polls he doesn't have that much support but his supporters are very very vocal 
That doesn't mean that he has a very large number of supporters. That means he has very vocal supporters, and he has just enough of them so that you see them around all the time, and then they make, you know, they make lots of waves and make lots of noise. So uh, I'm not particularly worried about that, no. What is the best recipe to cure your sorrows, Ginger Atheist asks. Computer games. That's an easy answer. Uh, that's just, that's always been sort of my go-to anyway, even if I'm not sorry, even if I'm feeling perfectly happy. If there's something that uh, I want to do to kill a little time. But recently, over the last couple of years, of course, with me doing the YouTube stuff, I've been more likely to do this rather than gaming, so it's taken away some of my gaming time. Best sporting event. Oh, and back to back to that question, too. Like, when I think of consumption of material, things like you know, books and TV and that kind of thing, like that kind of, that kind of thing can be interesting for a while, but then I think about things like, uh, think about actually being part of your own entertainment, like with gaming and that kind of thing, and that's kind of, to me, another level of entertainment. It's more interesting, it's more social, you know, I'm kind of, and I'm an extrovert, so I would like to be social, I get energy from people. So I then the next level of that is to actually entertain others and, and talk to talk to others and that's kind of what YouTube is. It's the next level. It's even higher than just gaming on a, in a lot of ways to me. So that's that's kind of how I think about it. So best sporting event, uh, best sport event you've ever been to, Mr. Good Guy 99. Back in 2003 was the first time I saw my San Francisco 49ers in action. I saw them in Philadelphia. It was a couple weeks before Christmas. The 49ers were, I believe they were 6-8 and eight at the time, and they weren't going to the playoffs, obviously. It was Jeff Garcia's last year with the team. Uh, Terrell Owens was there, um, and they won. 49ers won in overtime in that game. It was a wild game. They, they won in overtime, and um, at the very, very end, I, I shouted, Go Niners! and put my, put my hands up, and uh, I was... I was uh, Slightly afraid I was going to get the crap beaten out of me, but I didn't, and uh, so it was all right. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. So, oh, this will be good. What do you think of the Amazing Atheist? I've been wondering that for a while. Says IQ Brew. Well, the Amazing Atheist is really like I mentioned in a previous answer. He's really a fascinating guy. He also I know that when I watch him, like sometimes. He'll come out with things that I'm not 100% sure if he really thinks that or if he's just saying that to, because it's more interesting to say that. Not not that I think he's being not disingenuous, but just that just that he's being entertaining. And, and he certainly has a lot of really interesting thoughts. I've watched his videos before and a few times now, been several times really, being like, Wow, I really never ever thought about it in that way, that topic in that way, and so he, he's a he's a very intelligent guy for sure. And whether whether he's someone that I would naturally gravitate toward in terms of like his personality, I, I don't really know for sure, but he's certainly fascinating. Mm -hmm.